What is up, investors, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show. I'm your host, Everything Crypto, here to bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice. These videos are for viewer education and entertainment purposes only, so please invest responsibly as I want this community to thrive in the long run, and I love and appreciate you all. Now, we've got a very important market update today as we have to talk about BlackRock finally tapping into that Coinbase partnership to offer Bitcoin to their clients. We have Crypto.com once again making more crypto earn changes to the platform as well as a final and confirmed date for the ethereum merge and the developer of tornado cash being arrested so some very very interesting developments and without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show now i did just want to ask it if you've not yet hit that sub and like button please consider doing so and joining the everything crypto squad the number one goal of this channel is to bring you all of the news that you need to know on a daily basis to keep you informed on what is going on in these wild markets now i will be on vacation until august 25th as of today however i am already looking forward to getting back and getting back into the regular crypto content and i definitely do have some stuff planned for you guys while i am away now starting off here taking a look at the bitcoin and ethereum charts and you guys are going to notice that bitcoin is sitting at 23.8k so just a thousand dollars above that 200 week moving average at 22.8k all i am looking for this week going into sunday is a continuation of this bullish pattern reflected in a close above that 200 week and if we do see that then i would expect in the coming weeks that we will actually creep up to this 29 and a half to thirty thousand dollar level and i do really think that the black rock news could definitely be the catalyst that pushes us there as more and more big money does start to pile in now same thing can be said for ethereum here obviously a lot of this hype has been based off the merge and i do suspect that eth will come back to test that two thousand dollar level before we move back to the downside as there is just a ton of short-term positive catalyst and momentum in the market right now including the institutional adoption and interest in bitcoin and ethereum the e 2.0 merge inflation numbers that are finally starting to go back to the downside and unemployment numbers that i do expect are going to absolutely destroy analyst expectations so we definitely do have a ton of positive catalysts in the short term in my opinion however i am still preparing for another potential capitulation phase or dump in november which would mark the one year top on the bitcoin chart so i definitely am not saying that we are out of murky water yet but i do believe we are poised for a short-term rally now here's the eat the bitcoin valuation which is actually broken out above a massive level of resistance so i will be the first one to admit when i am wrong and i was completely wrong on the eth the bitcoin valuation chart um during this capitulation phase here we actually saw eth underperform versus bitcoin by about 30 percent however i predicted that this underperformance would continue as long as we were capitulating but then we saw a sharp reversal and a rally really based off the ethereum foundation making a ton of progress for the eth 2.0 merge and then eth rallied like 37 percent versus bitcoin so it gave back all of that underperformance it does it does look like a perfect v-shaped recovery here however i did also think we would get pegged at this level of resistance at 0.77 but eth does not care at all about what i think and it just ripped right above that level of resistance at 0.77 we are now all the way up at 0.79 which means we do have clear skies all the way up until the next level of resistance here at 0.86 so I definitely do still think that we're in a scenario where ETH will outperform Bitcoin going into the merge. And then following the merge, Ethereum may take a back seat and Bitcoin will once again lead the pack. And I do really think that one big catalyst that could cause Bitcoin to lead the pack is BlackRock finally launching its spot Bitcoin private trust after its Coinbase partnership. So the world's largest asset manager with over $10 trillion in assets under management is conducting work on potential of permission to blockchains, stable coins, crypto assets, and tokenization. They are finally offering this spot Bitcoin ETF to their institutional clients. And I got to say right off the bat, the one thing that does bother me about this is the fact that this spot Bitcoin ETF is allowed for institutions, but for some reason, retail cannot have a spot Bitcoin ETF because the SEC is quote unquote protecting us which doesn't make any sense whatsoever now over here in canada we do have spot etfs i do invest in those spot etfs and they are an incredibly handy way to buy crypto and get exposure to it in a tax sheltered account something that is currently not being offered in the u.s unless you go through a futures etf 
So don't get me wrong, if you are an owner of Bitcoin, whether you live in the States or not, this does benefit you because it is potentially going to open up this $10 trillion in assets under management to Bitcoin. So even if you own actual Bitcoin and do not have access to a spot ETF, this is still going to be incredibly bullish for you. I just think it's a little hypocritical and that there needs to be a spot ETF finally launched in the States. So BlackRock says here in a statement that despite the steep downturn in the digital asset market, we are still seeing substantial interest from some institutional clients in how to efficiently and cost effectively access these assets using our technology and product capabilities. And by their technology, they pretty much mean Coinbase's technology, as they basically did partner up with Coinbase last week to offer clients of its Aladdin platform access to Bitcoin. And this basically allows Aladdin users to handle Bitcoin exposure directly in their existing portfolio management and trading workflows. Definitely very, very interesting indeed. BlackRock has slowly warmed up to crypto. They did launch a blockchain ETF in April, and now they are starting to really get that Bitcoin train going. So this uh, tweet here from Miles Dutcher does pretty much sum up exactly why it is so important. And you can see here that they have $10 trillion in assets under management. And for scale, Bitcoin's market cap is $500 billion at the moment. Irrespective of BlackRock's intentions, it does signal one thing, that institutional adoption is happening and it is happening fast and just for some scale i really think it's important to talk about this because like so it does signal that institutional adoption is happening and fast now this is really important especially if you are a crypto investor i think it is very easy to forget that this asset class is still incredibly immature like when you are a crypto investor bitcoin the og daddy bitcoin just seems like such a big big asset but it's really not it only has 500 billion dollars in market cap that is tiny for reference apple has 2.5 trillion dollars in market capitalization almost 3 trillion uh microsoft is over 2 trillion and bitcoin is sitting down here with 500 billion some Thing with the potential to be a future global reserve currency and store of value so that is how early we are that is why i am incredibly bullish on bitcoin as well because it really is going to be the first one that these institutions do flock to for the most part and i think that's definitely a sign here with exactly what blackrock just did so now we get to talk about the big bad ethereum over here as they are once again closer to this proof of stake merge after a successful goerly testnet merge so the goerly testnet was the final testnet merge to be done before we actually do go ahead and make the main net merge however this was not without a hiccup as some nodes did get stuck on the wrong chain unfortunately he said there were lots of non-updated nodes leading to an unexpected delay and the merge was anticipated to go live earlier in the day however despite these initial speed bumps the testnet appears to be operating as intended and this does follow the successful upgrade to goerly's beacon chain bellatrix earlier this year so we have now edged closer to a full transition to proof of stake which is designed to pivot the chain to a more environmentally and energy efficient protocol now these are going to be some of the immediate impacts of the merge including the uh, energy efficiency aspect of it however we are going to have to wait a little bit longer to see a material impact on the ethereum chain itself in terms of like some faster transactions some lower transaction speed as highlighted in that five-step plan by Vitalik with the merge, the splurge, the verge, the purge, and I know I'm forgetting one that I can't remember, but the point is, is we're going to have to wait a while to actually see the gas fees come down on Ethereum. They will not happen right away, but the reason I am so excited for the merge to finally happen is because it is going to drastically increase the Ethereum tokenomics, and this is going to be happening in just over a little 30 days. This is why it is known as the triple halving, because it is effectively equivalent to three Bitcoin halvings. That's how serious this is for the tokenomics. So the triple halving will see the annual mission of new ETH dropped from 4.3% to 0.43%. To put this another way, we dropped from 13,000 new ETH a day to 1,300. This is a daily reduction in sell pressure of $21 million at current prices, which adds up to more than 600 mil in a month. Plus, we are changing Ethereum from its current mining economy to dump proof-of-work system to a fundamentally different one with different incentives, 
Welcome to the staking economy. The incentive is no longer to mine and then dump your rewards, but to restake to earn more rewards. And of course, we cannot forget about EIP-1559 that we have covered plenty of times on the channel, as this is Ethereum's perpetual burn mechanism. If we had a proof of stake Ethereum for the last years, then we would have burnt around 1.9 mil ETH total. So in summary, emissions reducing by 90%, EIP-1559 will make ETH deflation sell pressure reducing massively, economics changing, rising demand plus falling supply. You know what that equals. And we do finally have an official date here. It is the target date for September 15th. They do say to give them about a week of air. However, they got all hands on deck as you can see here. And they are very, very excited to get this merge finally live. I am as well. I cannot wait to see this thing go live. Honestly, if they do delay it, if people want to keep fighting it, I will continue buying more. But it does seem like there is a pretty strong consensus out there that this merge is going to go through in September. And after the merge, gas fees could be as low as a fraction of a cent. And obviously, he does say here that the current average gas fee is about a buck oh eight. We know that it was much worse than that, actually, in the midst of the bull market when ETH gas fees were ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, definitely something that does need to be worked on. And this will come with time as well. So he does mention, though, specifically that the gas fee could be as low as a fraction of a penny with roll ups, meaning that Vitalik is not really just talking about doing it by himself or not yet. Anyways, he does still rely heavily on layer twos. He welcomes the layer two into the space to really uh, support Ethereum. And a big layer two that we have been talking a ton about here is Polygon. Now they tweeted something massive is coming to accelerate mass adoption of Web3. Consumer finance will not be the same again soon with the eyes emoji. So this is very, very interesting. Polygon is one that I am keeping an eye on. We've been covering it quite a bit lately just because to be blunt, their news has been fantastic. Like this team is really building throughout the bear market. One thing I do not like about Polygon is the tokenomics. I mean, I'm pretty sure they dumped like 14% of their total supply onto the market last week. So their vesting schedule is aggressive. I understand it because they do need to build. But at the same time, from an investment perspective, that does make it just a little less attractive in my opinion. However, if we do see another dip in the crypto markets, I will be buying some because I do believe that Polygon is going to be an absolutely dominant layer two in the future. Now, we need to talk about this tornado cash situation again. This is just getting worse and worse by the day, to be honest. And now we see they have arrested the developer of Tornado Cash. A man was arrested for writing code that served as a public good for people to maintain their privacy online. They put a man in jail because bad people used his open source code. This cannot stand in any free society. And yeah, this is absolutely terrible. Like the Netherlands financial crimes investigator did make an arrest of the suspected tornado cash developer in Amsterdam. And this does come after the U.S. Treasury sanctioned dozens of blockchain addresses. I believe it was 45 addresses, to be honest, with ties to the crypto mixer earlier this week. USDC did also go ahead and join in there by blacklisting all Ethereum addresses that were given to them by the U.S. Treasury. Tornado cash as a native token has collapsed 40% since the sanctions were revealed. And uh, basically they said, here's the list of Tornado Cash resources that were banned, their GitHub organization, their accounts of Tornado Cash contributors, all USDC on Tornado Cash contracts, Infura, Alchemy Pay, um, and some domain names. So definitely very, very concerning indeed. And we did kind of talk about the potential ripple effect of this Tornado Cash incident, one here being MakerDAO. So for those of you that don't know, MakerDAO does have the fourth largest stable coin, DAI, commanding 7 billion in circulating supply. Now, DAI is different uh, from USDC and USDT as it is not centralized. It is the novel in the MakerDAO stakeholders decide almost everything about the token, including its asset backing, issuance, and interest rates, staffing, investment allocation, and supporting budgets. Now, here is a problem with this potential ripple effect of what USDC is doing. As you can see here, DAI is a collateralized stablecoin, something that I am generally not a fan of, but they have done a pretty good job so far of actually keeping that peg. However, what you're going to notice here, I need to zoom in for you guys to see this, is that 50% of DAI's collateral is USDC. And that would obviously be a massive, massive problem if USDC 
SEC was to blacklist and freeze this address, they would effectively lose 50% of their collateral instantaneously, which is absolutely horrifying. This is definitely not very good for DAI whatsoever. And this is the ripple effect of having centralized stable coins like this. So that's a real big problem. And now the maker DAO founder considers the sale of a portion of DAI's USDC backing for ETH. He says the sanctions are a lot more serious than I first thought. We should seriously consider preparing to depeg from USD uprooting, which is what I call the YOLO USDC into ETH approach. I don't like the way he said this, just YOLO, uh, your USDC into ETH approach. I think it, it would be a little irresponsible to have all of these funds in Ethereum. Like you do need some sort of stable collateral. I don't really see the community passing on this vote, but I do understand the concern that now is coming over here at MakerDAO with 50% of their collateral locked in USDC. We literally talked about this a couple days ago about how we would start to see the ripple effect of what USDC is doing. And it's honestly coming to surface a lot faster than I did believe it would. So we are already seeing a potential threat to yet another stable coin on the crypto market. And that is a result of another centralized stable coin. Now we're going to wrap things up talking about crypto.com as they did make some changes to the crypto earn program once again. I got a comment this morning. <clears throat> I got a pretty nasty comment this morning about, uh, you know, basically continuously defending crypto.com when all they've done is cut rates further back and further back and further back. And listen, I get it. It's not cool having your rates cut, but you know what else is not cool? Platforms going under because they don't say stay sustainable. And I've definitely seen less and less negative comments about it because I think that some people are starting to finally catch on to the fact that, yes, this is for sustainability and it does need to happen. So I really don't mind this at all. But of course, there are still some people that are upset about the crypto earn cuts. And truth be told is that uh, I haven't really used crypto earn for a long time for a majority of cryptos that are offered on the crypto earn program. If you just do a little bit of your own research, you could easily find some better rates out there in DeFi. I don't want to say easily, but point being, it's possible. And I don't really rely on centralized exchanges for yield anymore. Now, you're going to notice here that the yield on Bitcoin has gone from, I believe it was 4% down to 3%. And now they have changed the, the rate here on Matic from, I believe it was 20 12 and a half percent down to seven percent so definitely a lot more uh serious of a cutback on the matic rewards i'm pretty sure through matic DeFi you can get like 9.5 percent at the moment like it's very similar to avalanche so you know as soon as you cut the rate from 12.5 percent to seven percent you're just gonna go do it on DeFi with matic right so definitely not a big deal in my opinion uh, once again, I do really believe that it's important they continue to do this if it does ensure the sustainability of the platform. Crypto earn is not the main feature of crypto.com. It is not what drives people to the platform, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's the visa. It's the one-stop shop for all your crypto needs. It's the it's the ability to buy and sell crypto, the ability to pay for things with the crypto visa, the ability to have all of your NFTs within the same app, the ability to seamlessly transfer assets from crypto.com to the crypto.com DeFi wallet, where you can then gain exposure to DeFi. And that is what I think people come to crypto.com for. So so I love this tweet, builders keep building, and that is absolutely what they have been doing, is just building throughout the bear market. Now, why do you think they're doing all these changes in the first to middle you know, portion of the year? And this is something I have been saying for a while as well. That's because the FIFA World Cup is in 100 days. Now, Crypto.com as the exclusive advert, or sorry, the exclusive centralized exchange token of the FIFA World Cup, they're going to basically be all over the FIFA World Cup, all over the arena, all over the advertisements. It's going to be insane. And they are expecting a massive inflow of new customers. So that is why they are doing this now. It is pure business. They are trying to make all these changes now. They are expecting a massive inflow of customers at the end of the year. And obviously, they would want to make these changes before they are expecting potentially 10 tens of millions of new customers. So it's just smart business, to be honest, to make these changes now, and quite frankly, to upset as least amount of people as possible before they do expect this massive inflow. And people who are new and who join the platform are not even going to know what they missed out on on those earlier crypto earn rates. So that is the benefit of being early. I understand some people are upset about the rate changes, but you definitely can find some better rates on DeFi. And if you do have any questions about that or about a specific token in general, you can leave me a question in the comments down below, and I will try and just point you in the right direction to help you get started on some DeFi yield earning. So on that note, I hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video. I love and appreciate you all and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now.